y'all, it's Alma from the Cat's Pajamas, and I want to show you how to make these cute theater cards that you can decorate with die cuts or stamps or stickers. Anything is possible once you have the base of the card. Our theater cuttable comes in both the A2 and the 5x7 card size. After you purchase the cuttable, you're sent a link that you can download the file from. Decompress the file and choose what format you're going to use for your cutting machine. We also have the PDF available, just in case you don't have a cutting machine and you want to print out the pattern on the back of your cardstock. For this video, I'm showing how to use the Cricut Explore with the 5x7 card. Open the Cricut Design Space and select the new project. It will take you to the canvas. On the left side of the screen, the last icon is Upload. Click that icon and you'll be brought to the Upload screen. We'll be uploading an image, so click the Upload Image button on the left side under Image. Here you can click the Browse button and browse for the file, but since I have it ready, I can just drag and drop it right onto the screen. Once it sees the file, you'll be taken to this screen where you can see the image name and you can add any tags if you want. Then click Save. You're then taken back to the upload screen and you should see your upload file at the bottom left. Select that image and click the Insert Image button at the bottom right of the screen. You're then taken to the canvas area where the entire image is uploaded as one item. So the first thing to do is ungroup everything. And that is found at the upper right, ungroup. Now you can see that there are three items that have dotted lines on them for where you can fold them. I like using the dotted lines for when I fold, but if you don't, I also include a version without the lines and just a regular line that you can use if your cutting machine has the ability to fold or score. But I want to make sure that the dashed lines go with the items they're supposed to, and so I'll attach them. Select one of the items, and you can see on the right column, it selects a bunch of lines that say cut, 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 etc. After these are selected, click the attach with a little clip icon at the bottom of the column, and then select the next one of the group with the cut, 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 and attach. And you can see if we move them around, the dotted lines go with them. And then finally, the third one, and attach. You'll also notice that the pieces are separated by color. Now, if you want to change what prints on what paper, if you have a special paper, you can just change the color. Now, once you're satisfied, just click the Make It button on the upper right. You can select your material, size, like 12 by 12 or 8.5 by 11, and then the software figures out what is the best way to cut your pieces. Now, once you get your paper figured out, just click the Continue button at the bottom, and your machine will give you all the directions on what to do next. Once you have all your pieces cut, you should have one large piece that looks like a ticket, and that's the base. One frame with two arms. Three risers, a small, medium, and large. Two mats for the front, they're optional. And an optional front frame, just in case you want to add more stability to the card. You'll also get a front mat, also optional and two panels that form the sides and the curtains of the theater. You'll also need a strong glue or double-sided tape. I'm also using a tape runner and a burnisher to crease the folds. Now let's work on the front. Take the frame and fold along the dashed lines where the leg meets the frame and at the tab on the top of the leg.
burnish it to get a really nice crease. And add a nice strong adhesive or glue on the tab because there's going to be some stress on these joints when the card opens and closes. Fold the leg over and attach the tab to the back of the frame. Now if you're going to be putting an optional mat over the front of the frame, you can attach it, at, attach the tab to the front of the frame. And these form like little open, little pockets, little open pockets. Now if your paper is flimsy like this one is, you may want to add the optional frame that you cut. Or if you want to fancy up the card, you can cut a second base piece and die cut a shape out of the card and use that instead of the frame. Just make sure the frame that we just made doesn't show. But for this card, I'm going to use the one that I have. And if you want to add the optional match to the card, you can too. Now let's just set that aside. We'll work on the back and side of the card next. Along with the back and two sides, you have the option of using these two mats that are also included in the cuttables. Each of the two sides have three slots cut into them for risers. You can place them at the top or bottom of your card. Just make sure the slots are lined up the same way on both sides. Now let's do the left side first. At each dashed line, you'll make a mountain fold and burnish each fold. When you're done, the side should look like this, folded into kind of a round shape, kind of folded into itself. Now, it add, now add adhesive to the panel with a half moon shape and line it up with the back panel. The first fold should be pointing toward the center of the card. Now let's do the same for the other side. Line up the half moons and make sure the slide slots are a mirror image of the left hand side. And start folding. Once the side has folded into itself, just like it did with the other, Make sure it's creased really well. And, it ha and add adhesive to the panel with the half moon and attach it to the back panel, lining up the half moons. Now you'll notice the sides or the top and the bottom of that of the side panel are a little bit smaller than the back panel. That way it'll give the panel a little bit of room to move. Now when you're done, the back and sides should look like this. If you want to add your mats, you can do so now. And you're going to place those mats on the panels next to the slots. Now let's put the whole thing together. Looks kind of like a seagull, doesn't it? Let's start with the left side. Starting on the inner part of the frame, slip the tab through the opening between the arm and the frame 
and pull through to the second fold. The second fold should pass completely under the arm and end up at the edge of the card. The fold should be on the same side as the half circle. Now you're going to fold that flap over the arm and you'll place adhesive on the side tab. The fold of the tab should line up with the fold of the side. The tab should be completely clear of the slot. This creates a little pocket so that the curtain stays put and doesn't fall out. Now let's do the same on the other side. Slide the tab behind the arm on the frame. Bring the second fold past the arm and fold over. Attach adhesive to the tab, the little tab, and then fold the flap over to, a to attach, making sure that the folds line up. See the little pocket that catches the arm? The problem with a lot of theater cards is that the curtains just don't want to stay put. So that little pocket behind the curtain just helps the card stay where it should. Once everything is together, burnish everything really well all over. This will help the card open and close nicely. To add the risers, pull open the curtains and insert the risers with the stoppers first. Now you may have to fold the stoppers down to get them in the slots. Just remember to fold the stoppers flat again so that the card lays nicely. And that's it. Just add die cuts, stickers, stamped images to personalize your card. And oh, the A2 size card has just two risers, but it's just as fun. I hope you give these fun cards a try. They're super easy to make. Have a great day.